a cash game, I think. I've spread them out. Like, really usually I color up yeah. if yeah. I'm having, like, a really awesome session, but I kind of never want to now because that looks really fun. Uh, he might have, like, 350 actual uh, chips. Yeah. <laughs> Come back and say they more money. 25. Wow. Big three bet from Berkey. And Casella has 9 7 suited, which obviously is way too pretty to fold, especially when the first card out is an 8 of hearts. It always teases you, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, best it's card not, for hand. at least he's going to get the second best card for his hand after mm -hmm. that. So top top for Berkey, Casella backdoor flush with the up and down straight draw. Ah, to be Matt Berkey and to actually have a hand and then actually flop really well. That must feel good for a guy with the reputation in the loony bin of just always having all sorts of hands. But ace king on this board, pretty damn good. Should we have gotten here though? Should Frank Casella have called preflop? I mean. I am not sure about this call, Grant. I must say, uh, if we think about the hands that Frank Casella is opening under the gun in this game, 7-9 of hearts cannot be very high up in that range, I mean, right? I hope it's not, right? Right. I mean, it's got to be one of the worst hands he's going to have here. Do we really want to play this hand? I mean, we are in position. We're not that deep either. I think I just like a fold and, you know, move on with your life. But it can't be that bad to call, having said all that. It can't be the worst thing in the world, but... We're here on the flop now against the one, the only Matt Berkey. How do we play against him with his open ender? Do we we see that Casella calls? Is that the better choice between calling and raising? Does Berkey have enough bluffs that maybe we should raise this hand? I don't like a raise that much here um, for a few reasons. Number one, based on the stack sizes, and I know it's hard to tell how much money is left because you're going to see they keep changing these stack sizes as they go. They're confused, but Berkey's got about... $30,000 back right now. So if Casella raises to any reasonable amount and Berkey shoves on him, Casella's going to have to fold, which is terrible, like with this hand. Like we sort of set up a relatively easy shove for Berkey with all his value, though, number one. Number two, Casella's in position. And so what this means is Berkey's going to have a lot of checks on the turn. And as Casella, I think we can just bet away, you know, and try and steal it then. I think it's a cheaper way to do it, and we're much less likely to get blown off the hand. I think that is a normal mode of thought, but I would like to challenge that Berkey's going to have a lot of checks on the turn. We're not entirely sure of that. Berkey mm -hmm. may have more bets on the turn than most people, and we're going to have nine high in the turn a lot of the time. Yeah. You just have to fold a hand with equity, or even a hand that has more equity than Berkey sometimes if he has enough bluffs. So, I don't know. I think against a player like Berkey, you could consider raising the flop, but yes, I do default towards calling because of the stack-to-pot ratio. It's kind of an argument for not calling preflop with this hand yeah. against a range that's going to three bet out of the small blind because it just puts us in weird spots. But now that we're here, I think, yeah, calling probably is the best of the options. We can see the stack to pot ratio. I mean, you can't see it because you don't, because these yeah. stacks are so bad, but the stack to pot ratio is kind of tragic. Now that we've called, um, as Casella also, there's going to be 13,000 in the pot or just about, and Berkey's going to have like 30 K back. I mean, not ideal. If you want to put yourself in bad stack to pot ratio situations, a great place to do it is Nitrogen Sports Poker. And if you use the link in our pinned tweet when you signed up, you get access to our special tournament. Tell me about it, Jonathan. There's a thousand buy-ins guaranteed every single month. It's amazing, really. They cap the players at 300. That means there's at least 700 buy-ins overlay every single time. Usually more, honestly. Usually it's more like 800. They've got casino games. They've got sports betting. What? What is that? Sports and betting. Sports and betting. They have sports and betting. They have it all. Nitrogen Sports Poker. Betting a call of 3,800. Pot ballooning up to 13,000. Four of clubs on the turn. Berkey may size this up accordingly. I mean, he's got 40K in front of him. Cassell's got 30K. In the middle. Went with eleven K. We did see Casella go nuts on that uh, Jack Jack. Oh, yep, wow. and he does it again. <laughs> the uh, Never the four fold. high flush draw before, and he does it again on the turn here. 
How much? It, this is, I mean, is Berkey ever bluffing when you, when he bets like nearly pot? Well, you turn? always have to say that Berkey is sometimes bluffing. <laughs> in this spot, it's like, but, it, uh, it's look not at the price he's automatically getting immediately. Yeah. Yeah. 43, 8 or something. There you go. And if Berkey doesn't overthink this spot, I think he's just going to click call. The other thing is, like, Berkey might think, okay, well, a club turn now. Like, he may have picked up a better draw, 20, Casella. So, 30, like, 40, calling with Ace King here seems pretty normal. 40, of course, he'd be dead against hands like 3 8 or 3 no, 10. 44. Yeah, he's right. Oh. 44.50. Oh, the, oh, I thought those were 5. You're right. Casella is stuck, and he has been drinking. <laughs> These would factor into my uh, decision to call here. There just are so many good semi-bluff hands here that Casella can have. That is most certainly true. No, definitely not right now. It's really, you know, you uh, mentioned this earlier, but it's just not often that we see Berkey in tough spots. And here he is in like his fourth weird spot of the night, or at least to him. No, I'm gonna get shown tens. It's oh. always tens, right? Oh God! How can it not be tens? This is like when you make a hand that How could I fold? when you play a hand that makes no sense <sighs> to the point that it levels someone else into a fold. Oh God! Don't do it, Berkey. amazing if you could get like a running stream of a person's actual thoughts. I mean, when he bet 11k on the turn, he was thinking getting paid off and value. It's not like he was betting 11k to induce a fold. So if his read was, if he trusts any of his there read from go. the turn, he has to believe part of it on the river. Or rather, you know what I'm saying. So anyway, Casella with the draw does not get there. What are you saying? Clearly, Matt Berkey was pained by this decision. Let's let's talk about it chronologically. All right. We talked on the podcast about what an optimal line for Berkey would be, and I thought I liked better the idea of check shoving the turn than betting the turn. Do you agree? I will say that you talked me into that pretty well on our podcast. Uh, a lot of good things happen when we check here as Berkey. Number one, Casella, the hands that Casella checks back are usually made hands that aren't super strong, like a 10. Mm -hmm. So Jack 10 suited, something like that. That's a hand that we can probably only get one more street of value against anyway. Right. Now, we do give, give that hand a chance to beat us, right? We give With it a little extra. Outs, so whatever. Yeah, whatever. Um, but, like, what we do, though, is we let Casella bet a bunch of his hands like this one that he has. And then we can check raise all in and actually force him to fold seven nine hearts or make a terrible call. That's great. Casella's going to bet all his hands, though, that are going to be able to call against us, too, like all his kings. Right. And we get to maximize value against them. Right. No scary card will come against King Queen if we get all in. Casella can't fold against a player like Matt Berkey if he has King Queen on the turn, right? right? If, if Berkey check shoves. So, yeah, I like a check shove better, but Berkey opts for the bet. That's fine, too. He bets really big. Yeah. He bets 11 into 12,900. So big. What do you think about the sizing choice? I'm a little surprised it's so big, mainly because the flop was. I know there's a 10, King 10 on the board. There's like gut shots and things like that that Casella has a lot. But there's not like a flush draw also or anything. I know the four of clubs turns clubs yeah. potentially. But I don't know if it needs to be this big. I worry that we're going to chase away good tens now with, oh, with yeah. this kind of size. Mostly we are. I feel like as Berkey, we could bet less and have like all the successes that we want just by betting 8,500. Tens are going to have to think about calling if we bet like 8,000, 8,500. 11K, they're just going to fold a lot. I agree. Yeah, I think maybe it's a bit too big. Uh, there's not that many draws. I mean... 
We know Casella has seven nine suited. I don't know if Berkey knows that Casella is calling yeah. preflop with that. Jack nine suited and Queen Jack suited seven nine suited are the only real draws that make sense for Casella to have. So it's not that much to worry about to protect against. I guess we could be trying to maximize value against the king, but of course we block that. Tens are probably more likely because of that. So yeah, I think I like a smaller bet too. But he bets big, and yet Casella moves in anyway. Yeah. For nineteen thousand more, is this a good move in by Casella? I think this is very bad move in. Okay, uh, break it down, uh, Levy. I, I don't like it, uh, and whose I don't voice, like it. Who, whose voice? Is I'm that? not sure, but I, I'm kind of into it. Is I don't it like, like it. I think that's like uh, Daniel Day Lewis from There Will Be Blood's brother. <laughs> like not not him, but didn't he kill his brother? Anyway, doesn't matter. Frank kill his brother Frank. So uh, no, I don't like it, and this is why. Uh, well, first of all, Berkey's range is pretty strong here when he bets 11K on the turn. I'm sure he has some bluffs. But if it's a combo draw, he's going to call. Yep. So if he's got the ace, queen of clubs, he's calling. If he's got the ace, jack of clubs, he's calling. If he's got the queen, jack of clubs, he's calling. Yep. Right? Um, so he's got those kinds of hands. He has made hands that are basically ace, king, plus. Mm -hmm. um, he might have king, queen also. Okay. Maybe he can have some king, queen. Uh, and then he's got, like, air. Right, and some of that air we can fold out here, which is cool. But that's the only part of that range that can really we can, we should plan to fold out. And the air is not as sensible of a thing for Berkey to have. Yeah. Now maybe Berkey has some air, but you don't really expect him to show up with a six of diamonds. Or I something, don't. Right. I don't. Not when not when Cassell opened under the gun and calls the flop. Right. I don't. So so I feel like this is just ambitious. I mean, it looks super strong. That's a good thing for Cassell is that it looks super strong. It does. We're giving Berkey two point seven to one. And Berkey's range is freaking strong right now. Like, I understand this is like looking strong because it's into a strong range, but that's never been a good argument in <laughs> poker. It's like a cool anecdotal argument, yeah. but over time you're just gonna blast money out of your window. Of course, your you strategy are. is to bluff strong ranges because they know they're strong. Yeah, that's not a good idea. It's not gonna work. That said, Berkey does have a lot of hands that are better than Ace King here, and he is in the tank, right? Like. How does Berkey dissect this situation? Well, he has a card that he really doesn't want to have, which is the Ace of Clubs. Yep. And that cuts down on a bunch of Casella's obvious bluffs here, right? Well, and, two of them. Well, it's two very obvious ones. Yeah. The Ace, the Ace Jack of Clubs, the Ace Queen of Clubs, right? Super obvious. Maybe Casella can have other club combos with this Ace and he floated the flop a little bit. You wouldn't expect that, but a little bit wouldn't too. Wouldn't expect it. But we, blo we blocked them. Those are the most obvious bluffs, though, right? Having the Ace of Clubs in our hand there. Um, takes those away. That that sucks as Berkey. Yeah. Because as you were saying, what is Casella's value range? Well, I think all of it beats us. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's 8, 10 or better. Right. right. So that's not cool. And as Berkey, we probably can't believe or assume that Casella's going to have a hand like 7, 9 of hearts here and move in. So That wouldn't be part of our calculus. I wouldn't think so. I think it's like combo draws and good hands. And right. if that's true, well, this is not a good, that's not a great spot. All right. Well, it, it, let's break it down a little bit further. So assuming incorrectly, the Casella only moves in as a semi bluff with combo draws. And assuming he does call a seven, nine suited preflop from Berkey's perspective, he's now only got three remaining. Yeah. He's got seven, nine of clubs, Jack, nine of clubs and queen, Jack of clubs. We're not going to give him queen, nine of clubs or anything like that. All right. Let's okay. just go with the open enders on the flop. Okay. Um, so that's three combo draws that move in. What's his value? Well, it's 8 10 suited that he had to have not raised on the flop. So there's only two combos of that anyway. So it's less than two combos if we're doing the actual calculation. Mm -hmm. Pocket 8s, pocket 10s, they're going to raise on the flop sometimes, but they're also here sometimes. Absolutely. King 10 suited, there's only one combo from Berkey's perspective. King, king, very unlikely. Yep. So there's not really that much more value than bluffs anyway. It's like a 2 to 1 ratio, and we're definitely getting better than 2 to 1 as Berkey. Yeah. But we might be low enough in our distribution with the ace of clubs in our hand to still justify a fold because we have ace ace. We have 10, 10, we probably have eight, eight. We have King King. We have King 10 suited. Maybe that's enough to fold even with ace King as Berkey. What do you think? Um, I think it's really close. Uh, the reason, the best reason I can think for Berkey to call because we're probably supposed to fold this in a vacuum against yeah. a normal player. But the best reason for Berkey to call with all this in mind is that Matt Berkey not only makes a lot of, Big time hero folds. It's all very public. Like we've we've broken down multiple big time hero folds by Matt Berkey. Often we really like them, even though they turn out to be wrong. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, so if you're Matt Berkey and you know this, which I'm sure he does, his reputation is that he might overfold in certain spots. That's another reason not to when it's close. I agree. Uh, and Berkey ultimately decides that's the case. And 
if he knew Frank Casella was the guy who could show up with seven nine of hearts, yeah. he would have called a lot faster, of right? Course. Or if Berkey knows from his own perspective that he has just a lot of random air bluffs, then he just has to call with this to protect against that anyway. So there's a lot of factors that could lean towards, well, you should just be calling no matter what because of either your range or Frank Casella's range. As it stands, maybe we're a little bit closer to accurate as Berkey's thought process because it took him a while to call. Yeah, it took him minutes. Maybe it was his reputation. Maybe it was Casella's reputation. But he ended up making the right call and winning a lot of money. Yeah. Frank Casella, crazy shirt guy, crazy move-in guy with the 7 9 of hearts. What do you guys think about this decision on the turn by Casella? We are not fans of it. We think, eh, time to give up the ghosts. Move on to the next hand. Live your life, man. But uh, Casella doesn't agree and moves in. Ultimately costs him an extra, you know, $30,000 or so. Uh, do you guys like this play? It didn't work this time. But moving past that, do you like this play by Casella on the turn? Do you think it's too reckless? Or do you think it's going to get enough folds that it's worth doing? Of course, he does have eight outs as well. Hey, what does give up the ghost mean? It means, you know, move on with your life. Yeah, but the, where's that from? Uh, you know, <laughs> so some like very Victorian old... era thing? Yeah, 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 something like that. I couldn't tell you. Speaking of Victorian era, if you want your stuff to be audio only, we have podcasts, by the way. We did a podcast with this hand. It's much longer, much more in-depth. We also do twice as many podcasts as videos. It's the Breakdown Poker Podcast with the Poker Guys. You should check it out. You should also check out our book. Here's a picture of it. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Good words. Good thoughts. Buy it. See you later.